Good evening. Tonight we celebrate the contributions of three remarkable individuals. Dr. Stephen Rockefeller. <laughs> Chef Eric Repair. and the late Adam Young. Each in his own way has contributed selflessly to Tibet and her people. Each in his own way exemplifies wisdom and compassion, which are the qualities that are fundamental to the Tibet Fund. So we are grateful for your presence and we welcome you and your family and friends. You are all here with a sincere motivation to extend support to the works of the Tibet Fund, one of the oldest Tibetan organizations serving Tibetan communities in, ex in exile with a clear mission to preserve the distinct cultural and national identity of the Tibetan people. Throughout its 32 years history, the Tibet Fund has been the primary funding organization for healthcare, education, refugee rehabilitation, religious and cultural preservation, elder care, community and economic development programs serving almost entire Tibetan refugee communities in India and Nepal. And after 32 years of its existence, Tibet Fund continues to make wholehearted efforts to improve the lives of the Tibetan people who were uprooted from their homeland 53 years ago, and still thousands continue to escape the inhuman atrocity in our homeland. On behalf of the Tibet Fund, I request your continued support in our modest efforts to protect the Tibetan cultural identity and improve the lives of the Tibetan people. <laughs> The Rockefeller family's incredible generosity allowed Tibetans to take their first steps toward self-sufficiency and cultural independence at a very, very challenging point in their history. In December 1959, only nine months after the Tibetans arrived in India as refugees, the Rockefeller Foundation granted $250,000, a huge sum at the time, to carry out research on Tibetan culture and religion in the West. The Foundation's grant enabled several Tibetan scholars to come to the West to pursue research at leading institutions, sowing the seeds for the later flourishing of Tibetan culture and studies in the U.S. and other Western nations, and grants were also made to support Tibetan artists. When His Holiness first came to the United States in 1979 to visit Amherst, Dr. Stephen Rockefeller asked Bob Thurman if the Dalai Lama would consider coming to Middlebury College, which is where he was at the time. The Dalai Lama couldn't on that trip, but he did in 1984 when he returned to the United States. Long before mindfulness, compassion, and kindness were household words, Dr. Rockefeller organized a symposium with a panel of religious scholars titled The Christ and the Bodhisattva. His Holiness attended, and he and Dr. Rockefeller formed a deep friendship at that time. What really struck me in my own personal experience was learning how Dr. Rockefeller and Lawrence Rockefeller and others contributed to the purchase of the building which has housed the Office of Tibet and the Tibet Fund for many years, and it grew as I learned yesterday in my call with, with uh, Dr. Rockefeller, out of his relationship with Rinchen Darlow from the 1984 symposium. And that building has served as our home for many, many years. And, and for that in particular, I'd like to thank you because it's been such a cornerstone of our, of our existence. In 1996, Rockefeller Philanthropy Advisors helped found the Bridge Fund, an NGO with the mission of promoting sustainable economic development environmental conservation, and cultural heritage preservation in Tibetan communities in China. When I spoke to Dr. Rockefeller yesterday and asked for his thoughts about this evening, he said that it was a deeply rewarding experience for him to have been associated with the Dalai Lama, 
the Tibetan people, and the Tibet Fund. And in what I imagine is not atypical, Dr. Rockefeller said he saw tonight as a chance for him to thank the Dalai Lama and the Tibetan people for what they have given to all of us and to cheer the Tibet Fund on. So please help me welcome our more than deserving honoree, Dr. Stephen Rockefeller. Moved by the Tibetan people's struggle for freedom over the past 50 years, and inspired by Tibetan Buddhist culture, many members of the next four generations of our family have been drawn into a relationship with Tibet in diverse ways. And I'm very pleased that representatives of three generations of the family are here tonight, including three of my children and three of my grandchildren. Now, <clears throat> one of my grandmother, Abby Aldrich Rockefeller's great-great-grandchildren, Eliza Rockefeller, who was away at college tonight but whose parents are here with us, developed such a strong interest in Tibet that she has committed herself to learning the Tibetan language. If and through these interconnections with Tibet over the years, my family has been able, in some small ways, to assist efforts to preserve Tibetan culture and advance the welfare of the Tibetan people. I am very, very glad. Now, this is not a time for long speeches, but I would like to take this opportunity to share my profound gratitude for what the Tibetan community in exile under the leadership of His Holiness the Dalai Lama has given to all of us and to the world. These reflections will be a preface to recognizing the urgent needs of the Tibetan communities in exile and to affirming my su strong support for the wonderful work of the Tibet Fund. First of all, I'd like to express my great admiration for the Tibetan people, for their courage, resourcefulness, and perseverance in the face of grave injustice and great tragedy and for their determined resistance to oppression. If the Chinese Communist government has hoped to break the spirit of the Dalai Lama and the Tibetan people, it has utterly failed. The six million Tibetans living under Chinese rule continue to face enforcement of harsh policies that in many communities cause great suffering. Over 150,000 Tibetans have been led to flee their homeland. The mission of the Tibet Fund remains as urgent as it was three decades ago. If the Tibetan community in exile is to achieve self-reliance, which is the goal of His Holiness, the funding of the many worth programs of the Tibet Fund is essential. Support for health care, education at all levels, and economic development is especially important. Since the Tibet Fund has only a small endowment, gifts and grants from individuals like you and me and foundations are a critical source of support as the, as the fund strives to advance the vision and aspirations of His Holiness and the Tibetan people. Now, I'd like to congratulate Rinchen Darlow on his visionary and skillful leadership as president of the fund over the past 25 years, and to say, Rinchen, it has been a privilege and honor to know and have an opportunity to work with you. I also applaud the commitment of Mickey Lemley and the Tibet Fund's Board of Trustees and the steadfast leadership of Richard Gere. And as Jeffrey mentioned, it was Professor Robert Thurman who put me in contact with His Holiness and Lodi Gary back in the late 70s, early 80s. And for that, Bob, I warmly thank you and also congratulate on your path-breaking work in the field of Tibetan studies. Now, it's been a deeply rewarding experience and great blessing to have had a friendship with His Holiness, with Rinchen Darlo, with Lodi Gary, and other Tibetan leaders. And I'm deeply, deeply appreciative of all those opportunities and it is also so rewarding to be connected with all of you in and through the unfolding story of Tibet. Our continued commitment and support is critical. Thank you so very much for this evening. <laughs> the 
world has come to appreciate Adam York as one of the world's great musicians. However, his legacy today stands just as strong as a passionate human rights activist and advocate for Tibet. For us Tibetans, Adam is known as someone who had a warm heart, cared deeply about the situation in Tibet, was very humble, and one who tried to live the Buddhist Sattva vow. He was a rare mix of magnetism and humility, humor and deep thought, a pragmatic idealist. He used his voice and quiet power to bring awareness to legions of young people about the situation in Tibet. The organization he founded, the Miller Above Fund, and the Tibetan Freedom Concerts that he organized inspired tens of thousands of people around the world to foster their own individual initiatives guided by the principles of nonviolence to bring freedom and peace to Tibet. Tibet gained instant support with Adam York on our side. A member of the Beastie Boys has died. The Beastie Boys helped introduce hip-hop to a wider audience. Today, one of the founding members, 47-year-old Adam Yauk, died of cancer. MCA, a.k.a. Adam Yauk from the Beastie Boys, one of the uh, great musicians of uh, certainly my generation. And this is me, The second time that I was in Nepal, I was actually in the mountains trekking and I met a number of refugees that had just escaped from Tibet. And um, someone who was with us spoke Tibetan and started translating. They explained that they weren't going to go back to Tibet until Tibet was free. Uh, if you guys will forgive me, I just wanted to speak my mind on a couple things. And the more I got involved with Tibetan cause, I just started realizing that, that the only way a change is going to come about is through mass public awareness and the area that I'm able to help out with that is through music. I'm just really lucky and happy to play here today for something that means a lot to me. Adam Yauk from the BC Boys brought it to our attention. After that, it was just like clear, you know, what, what our mission was, what, what our involvement was supposed to be. Today we've changed our name. We are no longer the Food Fighters. Today we are the Freedom Fighters. Let's not forget that the reason that this concert is going on is to help the people of Tibet get their freedom. So after this is over, if everybody could make an effort to do whatever they can to make sure that that happens, that would be well appreciated. I think that Tibetan culture really has something to offer us, and as we are working to help to benefit the Tibetans, I think it's really all of humanity that's benefiting from it. It's important for all of us to keep putting pressure on our elected officials, and we need to keep reminding them that human rights is the most important thing. Thank you for honoring the memory of our son Adam tonight and for recognizing his contribution to the Tibetan people he loved. We were proud that he used his fame not for personal glory, but to fight for the things he believed in. He spoke out for peace, for nonviolence, and for the Tibetan people. The Tibetan freedom concerts he organized brought the plight of the Tibetan people to the whole world. Again, we thank you for this tribute to Adam for us, for Adam's wife, Detchen, for his daughter, Lose, for his Tibetan family, Sonaman Chuki and Nunzi Wangdu, and to his brother, Beastie Boys, Adam Horvitz and Mike Diamond, his manager, John Silva, and his friends and colleagues, Spike Jones and Steve Martin, all of whom collaborated with him and their work will live on in music and in film. Many thanks for being here. He is world renowned as a chef, a restaurateur, um, but it's the second attribute, generosity that I'd like to talk about tonight. Eric 
never hesitates to say yes whenever we come to him with some harebrained request. He is always there for us. His whole staff is there for us. He gets a dozen of the top chefs in the country to come and cook for you all. And he has been generous not only to the Tibet Fund, to many of the other Tibetan organizations. So um, I would like to uh, ask you to help me welcome Eric and thank him for the extraordinary meals that he has prepared for us, especially tonight, but for all the meals and all the generosity he's shown to the Tibet Fund and to the Tibetan people. Eric. I'm, I'm truly uh, uh, humbled and uh, thankful that Tibet Fund believe that I contribute in, to some capacity uh, to help Tibetan people all over the world. Um, I love the Tibetan community. When I grew up, my knowledge about Tibet was basically Tintin in Tibet. <laughs> I, right? And then in 1989, I came to the US. And when I came to the US, something happened. Um, His Holiness got the Nobel Prize for Peace. And I read his speech of ac acceptance. And it moved me so much um, that suddenly I became very curious about not only the, the Tibetan uh, society and, and, and your culture, but about Buddhism. And, and despite what Dalai Lama always warned uh, us when we go to the class, um, don't change your, your religion, I became a Buddhist. <laughs> um, uh, today, I mean, as you, as you know, uh, Tibetan people are struggling um, inside China, outside China, and, and what you do tonight, uh, it's very essential for the people that you have, I mean, you have seen it on the screen, uh, for all those refugees who can escape and for the ones who cannot escape. Uh, for you to be so generous and be helpful tonight, it's, it, it's very important. So. My little contribution is equal to yours. Um, I'm, again, very honored, obviously. And uh, anytime you need me, please call. Thank you. Thank you. benefited, my wife and I, more than uh, maybe the, what we've given. It's, uh, the uh, Tibetan people in exile are extremely uh, warm. Uh, it's kind of uplifting to work, help and work with people. Um, and it's, it's pretty evident that of all the kind of human experiments, I think, that are going on in the world, I think the Tibetan uh, cause is is one of the most pure. Uh, we are, uh, uh, it, it, it make, it pro, its approach to life and to kind of civility is, uh, is something that basically the whole world can live with. I have great admiration for the Tibetan people, for their courage, their resourcefulness, their perseverance in the face of a great tragedy. And I also have great admiration for their determined resistance to oppression. And in addition to all of that, one cannot help but have deep, deep admiration for His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the great courage and vision with which he has been leading the Tibetan people. And I see the Tibet Fund as an organization that is playing a critical role in supporting the Tibetan communities in exile, and also some of the Tibetan communities in Tibet. And so I am very proud and pleased to be associated with the Tibet Fund, and am very pleased if in some way I can be of help to the Tibet Fund. <laughs> 